part of AMFM247.com. Get a hold of Jason. He will get you together, and uh, we can get things going. You can get on iHeartRadio. You can get on many stations across the country. Check out AMFM247.com. We are going to go to our first guest of our broadcast day. And I believe Hello? we've got Sean Connolly. Sean, can you hear us, my friend? I, I can. How are you? Pretty good, actually. I am glad that uh, we've got you on our program today. How are you today, my friend? I I'm doing really well. I'm excited to be here. So, uh, Sean Connolly joins us today here on Skype. And uh, Sean is amazing. And uh, Sean, tell us a little bit about your background, my friend. Yeah, I... Um... From a very young age, I, I, I started pursuing a uh, uh, NFL career. I just got very uh, just wrapped up into into playing football as, as a young kid, and it's something I pursued um, all through college and, and into the NFL and um, was able to uh, play in the NFL on and off with, with a handful of different teams. And then um, uh, after I had an injury, actually it was, it was a culmination of, of multiple injuries, my body just pretty much fell apart. So um I wow. moved on, and uh, eventually now I'm I'm, I'm, te I'm uh, a yoga teacher actually. <laughs> That's awesome! That is fantastic. We have got a, a great guest with us today. He joins us live here on our big program. Go ahead and go over to seanconnolly.net for more information. It is your one-stop shop for everything Sean Connolly. And uh, Sean joins us today via the magic of the old Skip Skype, the old Skyper Rooney. And uh, he has got a tremendous book. Uh, Sean, this book, uh, like I said, I can't say enough good things about the book. Uh, the book is called The Point After, How One Resilient Kicker Learned There Was More to Life Than the NFL. Uh, Tell us a little bit about this book, because it is, uh, it, it, it is uh, as my good friend Starmaker Boland would say, tremendous. Oh, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, you know, you know the book was initially, my, my initial idea for, for writing the book was just like, like a how-to to help people get into yoga. But I, I got some really good advice from some uh, um, from some other, other writers who are also yoga teachers and said, you know, no, you need to share um, your journey, you know, through football, because you're one of the more unlikely people to, you know, to, to do something like this. And so, you know, when I wrote the book, I just tried to be as, you know, honest and as raw, and I guess you could say as, as vulnerable, vulnerable as I could be, because, you know, being like a kicker, um, you know, there's a lot of ups and downs, and we may not have the physical injuries that, uh, you know, most professional football players, you know, suffer from or at risk for it, We go through a lot of like mental things and, you know, uh, you know, a lot of self doubt, uh, a lot of roller coaster highs and lows, always feeling like, you know, the next day or the next kick, your job could be, could be over. Uh, so I tried to bring a lot of that into the book and just to make it more, you know, not just about football, but how we all, you know, hope I was hoping that people could relate to just, you know, how we can, you know, get too caught up into, uh, you know, identifying ourselves as just this one thing. And for me, that's what it was. I always identified myself as a football player. So eventually when my career was the big low after some ups was that it ended prematurely, you know, I had to had to move on and find something else to, to do that. Uh, you know, that was that was my passion. That's awesome. Sean Connolly with us today. He joins us live here on our big program. You can get more information on his book at seanconnolly.net. That's seanconnolly.net. And uh, the book, The Point After, is now available. So tell me about the writing process of putting this book together. How long did it take to write it? Uh, what was the editing process like? All that. <laughs> yeah, so... so I have a tendency to get a little too goal oriented. When I first started writing the book, I was actually 42 years old. My goal was, for whatever reason, I wanted to have it done by the time I was 45. It ended up actually taking eight years, so I, I finished it just last year when I turned 50. Um, and uh, the, the process was was, you know, it was crazy. I got, I got some good advice from from some writers who just told me, hey, just share as much as you can and just put it all on paper. And so. My, my first draft was was approximately uh, uh, 450 pages, which was, was which was huge. And you know, the, he he advised me to uh, just to write big. And then I spent, 
you know, a handful of years, a few years, uh, whittling that down and just, you know, cutting out, you know, parts of the story that just weren't, you know, part of the theme or, you know, you know, what, 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 what people would be interested in. And, uh, you know, I, I asked a lot of people from help and I, or for help, and I had so a lot of different editors help me, uh, you know, who were my friends before I finally had a, 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 a piece of work that I was I felt pretty good with, and then I started the whole you know blast emailing agents, which was which was quite the process. Well, at least I thought it was going to be quite the process. I, I emailed fifty, and, and a minute later I got a, a response from an agent who was a huge. Uh, Michigan football fan, it turned out, and so that was like my big break breakthrough. And she was like a big Jim Harbaugh fan, who actually was a, was a uh, who I'm, who's in the book, who was a friend of mine when, when I was at the Indianapolis Colts. So it just seemed like this was definitely the person to go to. And that's awesome. And then luckily, uh, my agent was able to land me a deal with uh, with Lions Press. I feel pretty lucky. That's tremendous. Sean Connolly with us today. He joins us live here on our big program, and you can get more information on his book at seanconnolly.net. So what's been some reviews and uh, feedback you've gotten on this book? Yeah, you know, I, I, I've been very pleasantly surprised on the feedback because my, my my hope for the book was that it was more than just a sports book. I tried to, you know, I, I gave details about, about the art of kicking and about some of my games, but I tried to make it more about – you know, like what I was, you know, feeling in the moment and, you know, the, you know, the, the emotional part of the game and, you know, the emotional part of not you know, leaving the game, you know, not on my own terms. And so, you know, a lot of the reviews have been that it's that it's more than a football book and it's something that, um, you know, each one of us, you know, can relate to because, you know, some, sometimes we, we feel like our life has this perfect beginning middle and end it's supposed to go this way but you know my story you know it didn't go that way but i think what makes the book uh unique is most football autobiographies are about a, a player such as you know maybe some like a tom brady where we know like where it goes and all the successes but i i was a more typical football player where my career lasted you know just just you know you know three years which is you know 90 percent of the players like when we watch an nfl football game 90% of those guys on the sidelines two or three years down the road, they're going to, they're going to be out of a job. Yeah. That is, uh, <laughs> you, you, you are uh, not a kid on that, my friend. So where, where do you see this book going? What are some of your goals for this book? Yeah. You know, I, I think my goal uh, is, is to, you know, like I hope that it goes beyond that because, you know, right, right now, or I think at the beginning it's been mostly, uh, you know, doing really well, like out there in the in the in the sports book world. But you know, my goal is 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 to go beyond that. You know, some of the feedback that I've been getting that I've been pretty happy with is a lot of um, adults who've been reading the book have been passing it on to their kids because I believe there's a lot of lessons in there. Where you know, I I drove myself really hard to make the NFL, and I, I did accomplish that. But I drove myself so hard that you know, in my body by the time I was age. I hit 25 it, it felt like I was I was I was 75 and I was really hard on myself too when you know things wouldn't go my way and so you know I know a lot of parents are you know like suggesting to their like their teenagers who are really into sports to read it because like nowadays there's a lot of you know single sport focus you know where players are becoming uh, from repetitive use injuries you know at, at much younger ages you know like 12 15 you know 18 years old you know, because they've been playing only the the same sport, and so the book I think helps that idea of if if you just train too hard on just one sport, your body's not gonna not gonna last very long. We've got Sean Connolly with us today. He joins us live here on our big program here on AMFM twenty four seven dot com. Thanks for joining us today here on AMFM twenty four seven dot com. The point after Sean Connolly with us today here in our broadcast. Why is it that the uh, the kickers I always see on like social media and some of these memes about uh, 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 kickers don't get a lot of respect? Why is that? <laughs> yeah, I, I think that you know I, I I struggled with that a lot. You know the the you know the kickers we do the least amount of the work during the games and also in practice, and so that. It was something for me I always fought with. I didn't want to be just that, that kind of kicker, so I spent tons of, tons of time uh, in, in the training room. But, you know, you know I think when you know, the, all the players are out there, they're, they're banging heads and they're going through what they, what they do. The, you know, the athletes, the kickers are not looked at as, as on the same level of athletes, which I totally understand. Um, but I think where it's, 
where it's uniquely challenging for kickers is that whole, you know, being on the spotlight where if they go out there and they miss two kicks in a row, like their, their, their job is, 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 is done. They're gone. You know, if a, if a, if a, if a, if a player, an offensive lineman misses a couple blocks that game, he's going to be okay. But the kickers, you know, that that's, that's expected to be their job. And if they can't do it at a, you know, super high level proficiency and nowadays in the NFL, you have to make, you know, at least, you know, like four out of five kicks, 80%. Otherwise, you know, you're, 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 you're not up to snuff, so to speak. Fantastic. Sean Conley with us today. He joins us live here on our big program. And uh, Sean, this this book is uh, just absolutely fascinating. Uh, what were some of the things you wanted to put in the book that you kept out? Or what were some things that uh, you, kept, you, you put in the book that uh, you realized later you probably shouldn't have put in the book? Or did anything like that happen? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I wanted to put in more uh, like football stories about interacting with football players. Um, you know, I had a nice little relationship with, with, with Barry Sanders when I, when I was with the Detroit Lions. For whatever reason, on the first day of practice, he asked me if I wanted to play catch uh, before practice began. And so that became like our routine. So for the whole six weeks in training camp, I played catch with Barry Sanders, which I still to these days, I still you know wonder you know why he picked me. And but um so I had a lot of little football stories, but you know, I figured I only had to keep keep in a few because, you know, um, as I mentioned before, I wanted to make it more than just a football book, and so a lot of that stuff uh, got left on the, uh, I guess, uh, on the floor of the uh, of the cuts, I guess you could say. And I, I'm sorry, what was the, se- the the second part of that question? Well, uh, things that you put in the book that you wish you would have taken out, th- things that you didn't put in the book, all that. Oh yeah, 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 and. It, w- Probably toward the end, you know, a um, uh, little bit less than that. Because um, I, I, I think that like the lessons that I that I learned throughout the throughout my my journey, um, most of them had very little to do with the end. So <laughs> that would probably be it. And you know, my, my hope for the book was to make it more. Uh, show versus tell where you know I wouldn't like say what I learned throughout the, all this but just try to to you know share the stories and how I felt and 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 that and that would do the job you know that the, the hardest part for me along along my football journey was 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 when it over w- w- when it finished um, in my mind prematurely I was with the New York Jets and I came off of pr- the practice field that day and uh, I was only 25 and the kicker they had on the roster he was he was in his he was in his young 40s which for an NFL kicker that's that's beyond your time typically yeah. um, but I had a terrible practice my leg um, my injuries had really caught up to me finally caught up to me and I went to the uh, the to, to see the trainer and he told me that my hip had degenerated and wow. that he advised I never kicked again and it was just one of those things where you know when my whole goal was to make make an NFL team and you know I've talked to a lot of other NFL players and it, this is all very similar like players don't want to be told that it's over you know they want to be able to just okay this is it they want to go off into the sunset like after you know winning a Super Bowl or or accomplishing you know certain you know certain things on the field and that was the hardest thing for me because it really took me you know a handful of years to to really get over that and um, you know I struggled with you know, oh, I should have done this differently. You know, maybe I should have done brought this into my training regimen, or I should have took this out. And you know, I beat myself up for many years because I just, uh, you know, I really thought that that's that's how it was supposed to be. And you know, I, for me, that's that was the hope for the book that I could convey that in a clear message that, you know, that there's there's other options for us. We can we can always reinvent ourselves. And you know, what I thought was going to bring me happiness, you know, being this NFL football player for all these years really, really had very little to do with my, my long-term happiness. So Sean, tell us about the, the yoga part of this. Uh, because I'm, I'm always interested in hearing about, uh, that part because there are so many things that have, uh, you know, that, that yoga has helped so many people. And a lot of professional athletes use it. Uh, talk to me about your experience with that. Yeah, you know, w- w- when I first got into it, it, it was it, it was around well, it was around 2000. My career ended in '95, and actually, my my girlfriend 
um, who's now my, uh, we're married now, four kids. But when I was when I was playing and I was bouncing from team to team, she was already into yoga, which was way ahead of, of you know the time. It's very mainstream now, but back in the '90s, it was considered weird and out there. And you know, I had these issues with my back and my hips, and she's like, "Do yoga, do yoga." And I'm like, "No way, it's not. It's not manual, <laughs> manly. It's not masculine. It's not. It's not football. You know, it has nothing to do with that. I'm just going to maybe do some stretches, but I'm not going to do this whole yoga thing." But you know, f- fast forward and, you know, of, of course she, she was right that I, I could have used it because now, you know, NFL teams have their own yoga teachers, NBA teams, and, you know, LeBron James does yoga, Tom, Tom Brady has been doing it for years and he's still playing in the NFL. And so it's become mainstream now and I think it helps the players, these athletes, you know, all these different sports in so many ways. And I think the first way is, is the physical where they, the athletes start to learn Instead of you know driving themselves all the time, they bring in some balance into their into the, the the physical aspect of their sport, where they're basically using it to cross train. So instead of the next half an hour of working out, instead of running stadium stairs, now they're spending a half an hour doing yoga. So it's really helping these players, you know, not beat up their bodies and giving them uh, endurance. I know that you know I was reading something uh, about LeBron James and he was talking about yoga the other day, and he says yoga gives him endurance. It's why he can still play today and but the other thing is is also the the mind power the 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 meditation aspect of yoga from a an athlete standpoint is just it it helps them be resilient and to bounce back because you know yoga helps you focus on your breath and what's happening right now and so you know if if you're out there you know a basketball player and you, you you miss two free throws you know the yoga can help you train your mind to like okay let go of that I got to now I'll focus on defense, what I'm doing right now. And so both the physical and the mental aspects of, of yoga can be super beneficial to athletes. Fantastic. Well, Sean, this book is amazing. Uh, thanks for doing this. I look forward to uh, chatting with you more down the road. And uh, just thanks for being on with us today, man. Yeah, absolutely. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you for your time and having me. Do you have a, uh, a a follow up or anything that you're you're working on with this? You know, I, I I'm starting to just kind of like you know jot down um, ideas, and and the, the idea that keeps coming to me is just uh, you know writing a book about mindfulness and and athletes. I'm not quite sure how that'll look, but that's my current thing. I'm just every once in a while when something pops in my head, I start to write something down. But I have a feeling yeah. that's probably what the, what the follow up will be. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks for doing this, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Have yourself a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Very grateful. Thank you. Thank you, man. There you go, Sean Connolly. And we are going to take a brief time out here on AMFM247.com. When we come back, we have got more coming up on the other side. It is AMFM247.com. Coming back here in just a few moments here on the other side, and if you want to become part of AMFM 247.com, get a hold of us at AMFM247.com. Back here in a few moments. 